My name is Rev. Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Outer positive results in our lives will follow. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media and join the private Facebook group to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week and to support this podcast, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Welcome to Recover Your Soul. My name is Reverend Rachel Harrison, and I am so grateful that you are here spending your time with me today. For this episode, I wanted to jump right into the great question, how do I get what I want? If we're in this soul recovery journey where we're letting go of control, where we're turning the attention to ourselves, where we're surrendering, Rachel, how do I get what I want? And is it okay to want stuff in my life? Is it okay to want relationships and to want what I want? And the answer is yes, of course you can want what you want. And it's about looking at it a little bit different way. It's about utilizing the laws of spirituality, the laws of the universe, and attuning to them and to your higher power to be able to live a spiritual, happy, healthy life. So let's get into it. I know that when I was in my depths of darkness, what I wanted felt different. What I wanted had this belief that if I could get this thing, if I could have my relationship be how I wanted it, if I could have my house be how I wanted it, if I could have these clothes or this car or this job, then, finally then, I would be happy. I'd be satisfied. And if those needs were met, then I could finally feel a certain way. And that's how we're raised. That's how it is given to us. That's what society tells us. That's what social media tells us. That's what the media tells us. Every single commercial is about this thing, this nicer thing will make you better, will make you happier. This will achieve something for you so that you can feel good about yourself. Spirituality says that feeling good is the first step. That it isn't that those things aren't important and you can't have them, but those feelings of satisfaction, of happiness are fleeting. And it's fascinating how when we start down that trend where we have to have that pair of shoes to be happy and then we have that pair of shoes and that joy wears off pretty quickly. So now you have to have this handbag and then you have that handbag and you really enjoy wearing it and having it with you. But then it's not much longer till this handbag doesn't make you joyful anymore. So now you need this diamond ring, this thing, this clothes, this car, this boyfriend, And in the end, it isn't that any of these things make us joyful. We can have them. Again, it's absolutely wonderful and acceptable to have these things, but to have them be the source of the joy can be short-sighted. But how, Rachel, how do I get what I want? The first thing I want to talk about is that When we are in a place of dissatisfaction, when we're in a place of pain, we are going to stretch and want those outside things. And when we push really hard that we're trying to achieve and get those things, you'll notice that it feels like you're running into walls or it feels like you're spending a whole bunch of time and energy 
wondering why you don't have them. How come I can't have money? How come I can't have a boyfriend? How come I'm not in a satisfying relationship? How come I don't have good friends? How come I don't get to travel? My belief, my spiritual belief is that what we put our energy and our mind to is actually what we get. And I know that when I was in the depths of my darkness, I put 90% of my energy into what wasn't working, what I wasn't getting, what wasn't right. And I just got more and more and more of what wasn't working and what wasn't right. And when I started down the soul recovery path and started listening to metaphysics, started listening to positive psychology, started listening to new thought, I'd been listening to all those things before, but with this different ear Without that part of me that desperately felt like I wanted to force it to be the way that I wanted it and started allowing the belief that there was a higher power who was guiding me, leading me, directing me. And if I would change the way that I listened just a little bit, that I could actually hear that still small voice that was guiding me to my highest potential, my highest good of my true self, not what my ego self was clinging to, forcing, demanding. Now, if you think about how when I was in my darkness, I was in an unhappy relationship, unhappy marriage. My kids were having a really hard time as teenagers and as a family. Our dynamics were not great. Rich and I were still drinking and we're still alcoholics and raising kids in an alcoholic home. I was working at a job that was not feeling good, that wasn't making me feel valued, that I was really desperately confused about. Financially, we were struggling with debt and not having enough always, feeling like we were always really short. And there was no time for anything. It just felt like there was no space aside from work, 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 work. So as I started to learn how to release the control of everything outside of me. And I started turning the attention to myself to try to say, okay, if I don't have control of anybody else or any other things or any other circumstances, and all I have is control of myself and my connection to my higher power, what does that mean for me? And I made a switch in the co-creating in unity, which is the spiritual practice that I've been going to for over 25 years They talk about co-creating with your higher power. And what I laugh about now is that when I was in my human self, that part of me that was like forcing everything to happen, when I said co-creation, what I really meant was I'm the one who's creating and God's going to give it to me, right? That I'm the one who's going to say, this is what I want. I want it to be like this and that then I can ask for it and it shall come to me. That's how I'm going to get what I want. And that wasn't really working. So when I switched it over to, I'm going to let higher power be the driver, and I'm just going to be the passenger. I'm going to allow myself to be guided in a different way. Then something shifted. And this allowance of being curious about what it meant for me, inside of me, in my heart, Not from the outside world of this is what is supposed to be success, that this job title, that moving up the corporate ladder, that being the director of a company will mean that you have succeeded. When I didn't get that director job, I was crushed. And now I look and I think, what a gift it was. What a gift it was that all of that fell apart and crashed and burned in a big fiery inferno so that I would make a different choice that has ultimately led me to a much happier and healthier life. That when I didn't even know that when I was asking for what I wanted, I thought I had a definition of what that was, but what I wanted was to be valued. What I wanted was to be seen. What I wanted was to do good for the world. What I wanted was to be able to share my talents and my gifts and to be a leader in ways that would benefit myself and the people around me for the greatest spiritual good. And 
the job I was working, that job would not have done that for me. But I couldn't see it because I was so driven on this particular small vision of what success meant. So sometimes getting what you want means letting go of what you think that end goal is and getting more clear on what I call feeling tones. I'm not the only person who uses this terminology, feeling tones. The truth is that we think that the car or the job or the boyfriend or the handbag or the shoes are going to make us happy, as I said. But really, the big secret is learning how to find contentment and happiness with yourself first, which sometimes seems like you're getting the cart in front of the horse or the horse in front of the cart. But really, it is the secret to starting to change your feeling tones into knowing that regardless of what these outside, especially material items are, that having them would be icing on the cake, would be lovely. They are deserving. You are welcome to them. But that the happiness actually comes from your connection with your higher power, your knowing your value and your worth, you knowing that you are whole, you knowing that you love yourself, you knowing that the gifts that you have to give to the world are yours uniquely to share, that We are all wonderful and special. No one is no more special than anyone else, but that we're here individually, uniquely to share what was given to us. And when we make that little shift, it's amazing how it's just a tiny little shift and we start changing our feeling tones to feeling grateful and happy for little things, for seeing what is actually in front of us and not what we wish was in front of us. And being appreciative for each of those things. I'm so grateful for the rain that came today. I'm so grateful that I have this ability to connect and talk to all of you that are out there in the soul recovery community about how to be happier, how to let go of control. I'm so grateful that my life has twisted and turned and had all of these different experiences that have brought me to where I am today. I trust and know that I am being guided in the right and perfect path. When I just start to switch my feeling tones, I can feel that inside of me that starts to warm up, that starts to feel ease and contentment. And then when I feel that ease and contentment, what ends up happening is You open yourself up to that inner space that is being guided by your higher power, that is the place where the real direction comes. So when you say, I want loving relationships, the first thing to do is start to be loving, to start to feel the love for yourself, and that we get really attached to, I want a loving relationship, and I want it to look like this, and I want him to treat me like this, and I want this to be like that, and I want this person to be like that, and if they're not like that, I'm not going to be satisfied. Well, that rigidity is closing a million doors in front of you. And it may be that the loving relationship that you want isn't the one that you are in currently. Those are really hard situations to be in, but when we can love ourselves first, when we can trust and believe that everything is working out for us and not against us, that not getting that director job was the best thing that ever happened to me, although at the time it felt like it was the worst thing that happened to me, that to be honest, when Rich and I separated, gosh, almost 10 years ago, That probably was the best thing that happened to us, that we needed that break. We needed the awarenesses that came from that really hard time, that it changed us in ways that brought us back together with better direction, better clarity. And even though it wasn't the perfect comeback together and everything was all rainbows and butterflies, it was the beginning of a road that has brought us to where we are today in soul recovery. And again, it's a twisty, interesting path. Having the clarity of what we want also is interesting because so many of us think we know what we want. We know what we don't want. 
We certainly know what we don't want. But then if somebody says, really, if everything worked out the way that you wanted, what would you want? And most of us don't even know. We're not even all that clear. So part of it is also having clarity of what those feelings feel like. Again, we're not looking at the final end line of what exactly it's going to look like. We are allowing spirit to bring us to what the universe knows is right for us. It's more general than that. And I wanted to read to you some of the visioning that I did from a course that I took three years ago from a course called Prosperity Plus by Marianne Morrissey. And it is available at a variety of different spiritual centers around the country. And there are other things very similar to it. But it was really powerful to me. And what she has us do is she has us start to visualize what it is that we want to have clarity, but not such like rigid ideas that there isn't room for the universe to bring you actually something even better still. Sometimes we're so narrowly focused, we don't even realize that you could have bigger or the visions are so big that your inside self doesn't believe that you could possibly have those. So there's already a major block about being able to achieve them, that we don't want to go so far out that everything that is in our subconscious is keeping us from being able to have that. So it's this balance of growing and stretching just a little bit more each time and growing and stretching a little bit more each time and allowing the beauty of your higher power to be able to bring you closer and closer and closer to that which is yours to experience, the getting what you want, and knowing that you are in co-creation. So I wanted to read some of these visions because it's so interesting that these were not even in my belief system of something that I could have. So I'm going to do the one from February 2019. And I just want to remind you, in February 2019, I was a year sober from this recovery. So I I got recovered in February of 2018. I, at this moment, was working at the job that was, was falling apart and exploding. Rich and I were a year sober, but we were really still struggling with how to connect with each other. Both the kids lived in Colorado, still really hard. They were not self-supporting through their own lives. There was a lot of drama going on, and we had a lot of financial problems, right? Okay, so here's what I want to read to you. And it's about listening to the ability to dream, to ability to vision. So I said, I love eating healthy and being fit, having a vibrant and healthy life. I'm so grateful that I have Richard as my best friend, and we enjoy our time together both at home and as we travel. Our family enjoys spending time together with laughter and pure joy. I love watching my boys live prosperous and independent lives as they follow their passions and dreams. I love spending quality time with my friends. I'm so grateful to be working, helping people and inspiring them to live their lives to the fullest with healthy hearts. My income continues to grow as I work less and less. I love watching our income and investments increase and prosper and seeing zero due on our credit card accounts as they are paid in full. It's a blessing to be enjoying the beach in the winter, the summers in Colorado, and I love spending my free time creating music, singing for people, and making art. This or something better still, Rachel Ann. So when I read this, I almost, I almost burst into tears two times because this was not my life at all. This is what I wanted. This is what I wanted to get. And when I think now, those years ago, what I thought that I was going to get wasn't this. It wasn't what exists right now. This is even better still than what I could have imagined at that time because I had all of my past life attached to it. And not that everything is totally perfect, right? So I'm kind of eating healthy. I'm fitter than I was. But Rich was not my best friend then. He and I were still on that emotional battlefield with each other. And now we are best friends and we do enjoy our time together. 
And we have had the chance to travel and have fun. And our family, who couldn't be together without walking on eggshells or being irritated, we now do love spending time together, and we laugh and we have fun. And I cannot believe that the boys are doing what they're doing. I can believe. I take that back. I can totally believe now that I am immersed in this spiritual life that they have found their lives, that they are independently in doing their own lives. They're self-supporting through their own contributions and they're living their passions. I love the fact that it says, I love helping people. I was working in an office and now I'm sitting here in my own home speaking to you, doing spiritual coaching, speaking every Sunday at a spiritual center and a minister. I am doing what I wrote on this piece of paper, that I am helping people live their lives and following a spiritual path. And our credit cards are at a zero balance. That's incredible. So when I say that you can do it, I mean you can do it. If I can do it, if I can do it, you can do it. I was so lost. I was so afraid. And making this turn about changing just a little bit, having a little bit of appreciation, utilizing the ability to look forward, to look positively, to move my attention away from what isn't working, move my attention to what is working, letting go of control of everybody else and what they're doing and why they're not helping me live my full life, spending that time and energy on me. Where is my part? Where is higher power in this? How can I take responsibility for my happiness? What do I need to listen to? What do I need to do? And in terms of the job, I went almost immediately after I wrote this, I got called by a headhunter and was placed in a temporary job at a place that was not what my long-term thing was. And I got to spend five months just healing from the trauma that I had just gone through, that I had participated in. And in that time, I listened to podcasts and I listened to positive psychology and I listened to Al-Anon talks and I went to meetings every day and I did my work on me and I turned within and I did this deep dive into me. And sometimes I wondered, oh, is this what I'm supposed to be doing, data entry? But I knew it wasn't. I knew that this or something better still was coming. And then the job opened up at my spiritual center that I've been attending. And then I got a job there. And then I had an opportunity to go to ministerial school. And the vision came to me for Recover Your Soul. And I started blogging and I started podcasting. One step led to another step that led to another step. And the kids found their way to California. And I quit harping on my husband and let him be him and saw him for who he was and kept my mouth shut and only paid attention to what was working and more and more started to work and less and less started to be of the negative stuff. And we still have issues. There's still stuff. Life is not quote unquote perfect, but it feels different because I am co-creating with my higher power but as the passenger and letting the higher power be the driver and listening to that guidance of what is their really big picture of what it is that I want. And is it from my ego self or is it from my spiritual self? And now we have, I drive the nicest car I've ever driven and we're going to Mexico in October on a budget my vision of working Recover Your Soul and continuing to service this community and my big dream of being able to be at the beach in the winter is already happening this year. That we get to spend a couple weeks in Mexico in the fall. So I know that this works. It is the law of attraction. It is the law of the universe. So Tune yourselves just a little bit more to the positive. Allow yourself to dream and listen to that dream. Is it coming from my higher power or is it coming from this place that thinks, if I get that, then I will be happy? Am I choosing happiness first? 
Am I taking care of myself and my connection with higher power first and allowing it to drive everything else and all of the abundance, all of the fancy things, they're wonderful and we can have all of it, but it is not the foundation of our joy. Our joy is our foundation first. And then it opens up the universe to even more. I know you can get what you want and I know that you can start to listen to what that is. And I know that you have every beautiful thing in the ready waiting for you when you can open your mind, open your heart, let go of the pain, let go of the past, turn the attention to yourself, and let your higher power be the driver. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my path to soul recovery? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's how. Here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with your higher power, whatever that is for you, and to discover and then step forward into a happy and healthy life. You can also become part of our soul recovery community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's by Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website to get your Zoom link. Recover your souls on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, lots of ways to connect. And there's even a private Facebook group that will allow for more communication and conversation about soul recovery. There is also an extra bonus episode every Friday if you are an Apple Podcast subscriber or Patreon member. I'd also love all of the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time to give me five stars, a quick review, and to share the podcast with your friends and family, we're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you for going to the website and pushing the donate button, whatever donation feels right to you. This means so much to me because I have this enormous mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, your being part of this community is helping that to happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul.